and weekend. Um, this is a short talk from Manisha about the advantages of NFS version 4. And, and yeah, so I'll introduce myself. I'm Manisha Saini, and I've been working with Red Hat from last one and a half year as a QE engineer with NFS Ganesha team, testing NFS Ganesha. So Manisha, you have to speak up a little bit more so that people yeah. can also hear you. So uh, as it is only the lightning talk, so I'll, I'll quickly go through the topics which are main, like what V3 lacks, and then what's improved in V4. Then we'll have a quick walkthrough on all the v, uh, N NFS V4 enhancement. Then we have a sum of difference between V3 and V4 in a tabular form, and then just a quick overview of what is NFS Ganesha and how we are moving forward with cluster FS NFS Ganesha. So this is V3. So what's the problem with V3? So the main main biggest problem with V3 is like it is a st uh, it is a state test protocol, where whereas V4 is a stateful. So stateless is kind of creates a problem in uh, degradation of performance and locking issues. And then uh, in N N NFS V3, we have firewall problems like different services are floating on different different ports. We don't have a dedicated port for some of the services like MoundD, StartD, NLM. But we have few uh, ports which have dedicated services like Port Mapper, which is 111, and uh, NFS, which is 2049. But still, it's kind of a draw drawback in firewall. Third is like we don't have any integration support with locking, so we use NLM layer uh, for handling V3 with locking, and then we have only support with the POS6 Actel with NFS V3 Ganesha, and then at the end it only uh, operates single operation per RPC remote procedure call. So what's improved? It's a quick walkthrough on what NFS V4 has been improved. So first it's stateful. And then uh, fire, firewall has been improved with the dedicated port, which is 2049. Then we have a support of uh, pseudo file system. Then there's a features like delegation and leasing over HA. And locking is also improved with the, as a part of protocol only. We don't have any separate layer for locking as we have in NFS v3, which is NLM. And then there's the integrated support of ACLs, which lacks in v3. And then there comes a performance improvement with parallel NFS 4.1 and multiple operations over compound RPC. So it's like one one slide for each. So what is stateful? So with the stateful, we have uh, two new operations, which is open and close calls, which leads client and server nodes like what is the condition of they can easily communicate with client and server node. And, uh, so uh, guaranteed consistency in the sense in NFS v3, it keeps on writing from server uh, from client to the server, irrespective of knowing uh, the writes have been uh, pushed in the server backend or not. So the operations is like operation per five seconds. So all the operation will go in each five seconds. So it will kind of create uh, network congestion and uh, repetitive uh, writing. But in NFS v4, this is improved, so it will not write the other other operation before knowing that it has been committed in the backend. So, and uh, callback and recall function. So these terminologies are being basically used with delegation. So in the coming slide, I'll tell what is delegation. And uh, in NFS v4, it also keeps the track of all the files which has been accessed accessed by different different clients at different different times. And so every time it doesn't have to send any more uh, uh, information, uh, information of the file again and again. And it eliminates the useless right through it, which I told you as a part of guaranteed consistency. And then it also improves the file uh, locking via leasing over HA. So NFS v4 is firewall friendly. So you can see in NFS v3, we have different ports like port mapper, mount DNFS, log status, ACLs. We have different different uh, uh, ports for different different services. So if you can see, port mapper is fixed, which is always be uh, port 111, and NFS uh, port is also kind of fixed, which is 2049. But the rest of the ports, these key 
keep on changing. So the major drawback it will come when when suppose the client is in uh, five uh, firewall network, but the server is outside the network. So we don't know like which on which port the NLM and ACL services uh, and NLM and mount services will be running. So it's kind of a drawback for NFS v3, whereas in NFS v4 all these are as a part of a single uh, protocol and uh, it, it runs on a one dedicated port which is 2049. So this is also one of the you know, major benefit of NFS v4 which is a pseudo file system. So what is a pseudo file system? So pseudo file system is created at on its own via NFS v4 and uh, it's it likes I'll directly go through with an example so suppose if 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 the client has exported uh, if the server has exported the export fs local and export fs project nfs v4 so suppose if you mount the same root handle on nfs v3 so after mounting on NFS v3, the v3 client will have access to projects as well as NFS v4x also because these are not like hidden. But in NFS v4, it is intelligent enough, the root file handle is intelligent enough to handle. It will only show the local and local and project NFS v4 uh, directories as exported, but it will not show the other parts uh, which are not being exported. So if you want to show, you need to externally export these directories. So in, in pseudo file system, all these exports are act as a, as a directory via un, under root file handle. So this is uh, delegation in NFS v4. So uh, NFS v4 support both client side and server side delegation. So delegation is a technique where the server provides the delegacy to the client having permission to access, to, to write something on the file without being sending each and every operation via backend in the server. So this is one of the major ben benefits. So delegation, it's like uh, we have two kinds of delegation. A uh, server can provide a read delegation as well as write delegation. So multiple client, uh, multiple uh, client cannot be granted write delegation because uh, write delegation will, uh, if two clients will have write delegation at the same time, it will create a consistency, inconsistency. And, uh, and whereas in uh, read delegation, multiple client can have read delegation. So who decide whether the delegation needs to be, uh, be granted to a client or not? So it's only server who decides uh, whether the delegation needs to be granted and it, it depends upon the uh, previous experience, uh, pre previous accessing of files, like previous pattern of a file being accessed by different, different clients. So uh, suppose if the file is being frequently accessed by multiple clients, so it won't allow the delegation to those clients. And uh, so here comes a consistency issues also. So when uh, suppose a client one has taken a read delegation and at the same time client two comes and it wants to take the, uh, the right delegation. So in that case, the client, the server will send a callback request to client one saying key return the file handle, return the delegation because I need to grant it to client two. So in, in that case, it will uh, client if suppose a, cl uh, a client one has written something, it will it will just give all the commits to the server. It will commit everything, and then uh, it will it will grant back the delegation to the uh, server itself. But then the server will decide whether it needs to grant the delegation to other client or not. It's not guaranteed every time. So in in in, in delegation, all the operations are being copied from. Uh, if, if the delegation is being provided by the client. So all the operation done via clients is act as a local copy to the client. It will not send each and every uh, operation to the server. So it kinds of improves the performance as well. So it's like quick walkthrough. Uh, it cut down the scope of revalidation requirement each time because it has full permission from the server. The client can access anything if granted delegation and it reduces the network traffic and therefore improves the performance on the client and the server and have the access pattern of the file before providing delegation. It depends upon the access pattern, then only it provides delegation. And server may recall the delegation at any moment of time when other opens a file. It's like call, uh, recall and callback operations. So what are the challenges? 
So delegation is majorly it runs on 2049 port only, but sometimes it may opt some other port depending upon the firewall issues. So it can create a problem by with delegation. So suppose if the server is unable to contact to the client for for the delegation and it's not running on 2049 port, so server won't be able to grant the delegation to the client. And the other is suppose if there are a mix match uh, versions of clients running, suppose V3 clients and V4 clients, so the delegation technology will only be compatible with V4 clients and the other accessing the same file won't go through these delegation. And then there is a leasing over HA. Uh, so the problem with NFS v3 is, is it is a stateless protocol. So uh, the client and servers are, are not aware of each other's state. So suppose if the client is rebooted, the server will still hold the lock, keep on holding the lock, and it will not allow the other client to take, ta take the lock. But in NFS, uh, in the same case, if the, yeah, but in NFS v4, if, if the client is rebooted, the server is very well aware that the, the client has been rebooted. So it will <coughs> keep a lock for some time, for some grace period, and then it will uh, allow the other client to take, take the lock. But if the server is rebooted in NFS v4, so the server will put into a grace time for some time, and it will allow uh, the client which was holding the lock earlier, it will give a chance to that client in the grace period to again take the lock so that no other client can take the lock and it can again reclaim the lock. So this is what I explained and uh, more on locking. So it's the first thing only, uh, it's integrated, there is no LLM kind of extra protocol running in NFS v4 and the client must maintain contact with NFS version 4 server to continue ex extending its open and lock leasing. So once, once the leasing is about to expire and the client needs to do some more operation, so it, the client is responsible for extending the leasing period. And NFS server, V4 server and client can, so this is the drawback in which the NLM can, the in NFS V3 server and client cannot run NLM on the same client, like on, on the same node, uh, it cannot act as a server and a client in NFS V3, whereas in NFS V4 it can be used as a single server and client. So, uh, ACL is the uh, is one more benefit in N NFS v4, whereas in NFS v3 it only supports the post six ACLs, and uh, NFS v4 ACLs are much more richer than NFS uh, this post six ACL. So all the uh, post uh, all the post six post six ACL can be mapped to NFS v4 uh, ACL, but the vice versa is not same because it has many advantages in, in NFS v4 ACL which cannot be mapped to post six ACL. So we are currently Steam users are currently working on fixing this. And uh, yeah, in uh, NFS v4 ACLs, the user and group information are stored in the form of a string, but not in numeric, where in post 6 ACL it is stored in numeric form. So in NFS v3, so compound RPC, so for each operation in NFS v3, it has to send small, small request to, from client to server for each operation. Whereas in NFS v4, we can couple uh, many requests in one call and send it to clients. So it is kind of, uh, it, it improves the performance. So you can see the lookup, open file, and read, read data. All these requests have been sent in one RPC call. So this is the biggest uh, benefit in performance in NFS v4, which is parallel NFS. So in parallel NFS, we have the metadata server and the data server. So metadata server is like keeping the track of on which node the file is present and data server has the actual data. So suppose if the client needs to access any file, it will directly go to metadata server and metadata server will point to the location on of data server having the file, the, with the node having the file. So then after that it can directly communicate in parallel with these parallel nodes at a time. So it's like parallel accessing from client to server. So it, it supports three types of uh, support, provide three types of storage access protocol, file, block, and object. So file, block, and object. So it's these protocol are more related to uh, client and data server communication. So based on it, it communicates as, as block object, uh, blocks or object or a file. 
So, uh, we have this PNFS feature in NFS v4 which is in currently in tech preview feature. So, this is just uh, what all I have, I have explained in the earlier slides. It is just the summary, it is stateless, it is stateful, export are like NFS v3 all exports are, mount, uh, are mounted separately. But in NFS v4, we have the, uh, the pseudo file system. So, in NFS v3, we have NLM as a separate layer, whereas in NFS 4, everything is in one single layer. And then uh, in NFS v3, we have permanent locking there, we have the lease based locking. And RPC is like one, one operation per RPC, there we can have multiple operations and the fire, firewall issue and at the end. Uh, we have different different layers, uh, different different protocols for different different services in NFS v3. I'm running short of time, that's why I'm going through fast. So this is like you must have seen in earlier uh, Supriti's uh, presentation also. What is NFS Ganesha? It's just a user space address protocol compliant NFS server. So we have NFS v3 4.0 PNFS. Uh, protocols running and it uses the libg gf api and nfsl support to run the cluster server so we have a uh, integrated ha with pcs and pacemaker currently but in going forward we, we will be moving towards cddb with nfs ganesha and uh, it has the debus mechanism for exporting the volume so suppose if one node is down the the other the other node will will put all the nodes other nodes will get to know and it will put in grace period and it supports a lot of file system like cluster ceph G, gpfs and lusher so this is the nfs ganesha architecture and uh, this is what i explained and this is the last slide how we are heading with cluster fs nfs ganesha so we have some improvements in coming releases which is like read the chunk in, in nfs ganesha 2.5 it's it's more related to improving find and rms and uh, then we have x reader plus support in gf api which is in cluster 3.13 and then we will be having a delegation support which we are planning in nfs ganesha 2.7 with cluster 4.0 then we currently have a uh, pacemaker and corosync as a ha so in coming release we might be moving in ctdb and then we are also planning for asynchronous io io for nfs ganesha 2.4 release with cluster 4.x so these are the reference you can contact anytime with this mail, mail and irc contact thanks any questions Thank you, Manisha. Yeah, thanks. Out of the door, if you have questions, ask them. Manisha, all the people to leave the room. People travel back to wherever they come from.